There are several mysteries surrounding the photos you are now seeing. Look closer. Some people are missing. Most were reportedly murdered. And this was a Soviet way of telling the world who had been removed from power. During the Cold War, Western analysts known as Kremlinologists used to find it very difficult to find reliable information coming out of the Soviet Union because the shifts in power of influential people took place mostly in secret. Take this photo from 1897. Alexander Malchenko, the guy that's standing just over Lenin's shoulder, was arrested for counter-revolutionary activity in 1929. A year later, he was shot, then carefully removed from the picture. Here's another famous one from 1926. The first comrade to be disappeared was Nikolai Komarov. Then Nikolai Antipov, Nikolai Shvernik, Sergei Kirov, the last man standing, Joseph Stalin. Media outlets such as Pravda and Red Star were used to publish formal agendas, slander, and misinformation. This is why analysts were forced to read between the lines. As Winston Churchill once said, Kremlin political intrigues are comparable to a bulldog fight under a rug. An outsider only hears the growling, and when he sees the bones fly out from beneath, it's obvious who won. Every meeting, photo, video, and speech was analyzed to its finest detail in order to understand what was happening in internal Soviet policies. In this example, a Kremlinologist from the CIA figured out that Soviet politician Konstantin Chernenko disapproved of the invasion of Afghanistan. He obviously didn't say it was bad, but he did not say it was good. In the version published in Pravda, he didn't even mention Afghanistan at all a kind of behavior in the Soviet Union which usually connotes opposition. Now, although the Soviet Union is long gone, Russia still remains a closed society. Most information is filtered through its president Vladimir Putin, along with other groups within the Kremlin. There's a propagandistic news network. The White Helmets may be preparing to stage a chemical weapons attack to provoke Western intervention. Dismissive diplomats. Нас обвиняют не только в этом, нас обвиняют во всем, что происходит, по мнению наших западных партнеров, не так на этой планете. And many unanswered questions. What sickened a former Russian spy who's now fighting for his life? So do we need a new generation of Kremlinologists to understand what's happening in the Kremlin today?